Hi guys, welcome to Computerized Control. Today I'm going to talk about frequency response. Frequency response in discrete time systems. So when we talk about frequency response, the, our first thought is about sinusoidal signals that now are sampled. We are taking the samples of sinusoidal signals. You know that when we have an nonlinear system here and we are exciting with the sinus, we'll get our output will be a sequence of several sinusoidals with multiple harmonics. When we have a linear system and we are exciting with the sinusoidal, what we'll get is an amplitude and a phase but the same frequency and this is the only output we'll get. So what characterizes linear systems from the frequency response perspective is that when we excite with one single tone, we will get only that single tone in return. So we are working in this semester with linear time invariant systems, LTI systems. In that case, we can define a transfer function. So how does it relate the concept of transfer function and the concept of frequency response? Let's see. So the frequency response is how this amplitude and this phase depends on the frequency for a given system. And you know that in continuous time systems, we could get the amplitude and the phase directly from the transfer function. We just needed to replace S by J omega. So how do we do it from continuous to discrete time systems? So in discrete time systems, instead of replacing S by J omega, we are going to replace Z by E J omega cap. So the frequency response, how this amplitude and this phase depends on the frequency will be given by this expression. So is pretty much the same. So this is the frequency response, the module, and the frequency response, the angle. So the angle gives the phase deviation and the module will give us the amplitude gain. At this point, we could ask, is this a periodic signal? But I think this is more of a matter for signal theory than control theory. So here we just want to think about the sinusoidal that is underneath the signal. So there is a bridge here also between the omega in continuous time and the omega in discrete time. So this omega, which is in radians per second, multiplies by the sampling period, which is in seconds, and gives the frequency in radians. So this frequency in radians will not have any information about time it will be completely a dimensional from the time perspective. So when we talk about the frequency response in the Z domain, we can talk about this quantity. Instead of using omega, a dimensional, we can use the omega in radians per second, so the one that has sense to us, because it has some information about the time and the bandwidth. Again, when we talk about the frequency response, we can think about several possible representations, such as the Bode diagrams, the gain and the angle versus the frequency, the Nyquist di diagram, real versus imaginary, or even the Nyquist, which is the gain versus the angle. So we are not studying this one, we just put our focus on the Nyquist on the Bode because they have the, all the information that we need for developing control systems. So again, let me talk to you a little bit about the sampling rate. So you know that we saw this example on the first lesson that if we have two different signals, they could have the same samples. And this is because of the aliasing. So there is this maximum frequency on the Nyquist frequency, which is pi divided by Ts. So when we develop our frequency response, it will only be valid until this Nyquist frequency. So this Nyquist frequency is the limit for our frequency response. The problem is that we were used to develop our body plots 
and the body plot was a base for the control development using a synthetic body plot. But now we have these limits on the Nyquist frequencies. Are we still having a synthetic body plot? Not. So we need to find a way to recover this. Let's see a trick. So we wanted to have the discrete plant and make the design in the frequency domain to get the controller, for instance, using compensators. But this we know that is not possible. So we need some magic trick. The magic trick is like going to a parallel universe. This really looks like science fiction, but it's quite simple. So what we are going to do is to create a parallel universe, this W domain as a continuous time domain, and has a transformation that maps the discrete time in this continuous time, but this, I, I will reinforce the fact that this is completely artificial. This is not our continuous time. This is continuous time in the parallel universe, just for doing some math calculations. And here you see that we don't have any limitation on the Nyquist frequency. So the unit disk will map completely on the left half plane to infinity. So this is a conformal mapping, this conformal mapping defined by this formula, has the property that two different points here will map on two different points there. So no aliasing possible here. And we have the inverse. And do you already know this transformation? Because this is the touching transformation that we have used in discretizing controllers. But now we are using it for a different purpose. So let's call it here as the bilinear transformation only. So our initial objective was to have the discrete plant and get the discrete controller by designing in the frequency domain. But because it's because of the limit on the Nyquist frequency, it's not possible to do asymptotic boat plots. So we are a little bit lost here. So this is not possible. So what we will do is we go through this bilinear transformation to this continuous space. So we will have this continuous plant. And then using asymptotic boat plots, we will design the controller the same way we did on continuous time systems in the first semester. And then when we add this controller CW, we will apply the linear transformation the other way around to get CZ. So you see the point? So this way is not possible. So we go to this, this parallel universe, which is continuous. We develop the same way we did on continuous, and then we come back to discrete time domain. So this is a bridge between omega, the frequency that we already know for continuous time systems, and the, the frequency in this new domain, W. So let's call it new. This new Greek letter represents the frequency in this new space. And the relationship between these two frequencies is like this half of tangent. So you see that Frequency omega has the li this limit in the Nyquist frequency, and this represents infinity in this new frequency. But we can also see that when we are operating in a sampling rate that complies with the selection rule of the maximum frequency be less than one-fifth of the Nyquist frequency, that because we are not working with perfect reconstruction, remember that, you can see that for that part, omega and nu are pretty much the same. So let's take an example. So let's take this plant with a second order transfer function that has the corresponding frequency response. And from this frequency response, let's plot the body. And let's say that we have the maximum frequency in this point when we have minus 20 dBs from the initial gain. So this gives a maximum frequency of 60 radians per second. Then if we multiply by 5, we get the Nyquist frequency. The minimum Nyquist frequency should be 300 radians per second. So let's take a sampling rate that will ensure that we, are, we have the Nyquist frequency at least five times the maximum frequency. OK, using this sampling rate, Let's do the discretization of the initial plant, and we get Fz. 
So of course we are using GOH method. The sampling rate selected continues to discrete. So now from the discretized plant, you have the corresponding frequency response in omega caps or in omega in radians per second. And here in this body plot, you have in blue the frequency response for the continuous time system, so the body plot for continuous time system. And you see that in red, it goes along, but when it approaches the Nyquist frequency, so pi divided by 10 milliseconds, you get this limit, so it won't go beyond this point. Now we are going to use the bilinear for going from the discrete to this continuous. We are discrete to continuous, 10 milliseconds is already settled for the FZ, and we are using testing method. So testing because this is the bilinear transformation. And this is what we get. So a little bit strange, but it is what it is. And now from FW, in this expression here, we, by replacing J nu, we have the frequency response. So what you see now here in this plot is a superposition of the original both plot with the discrete one with this new in the W domain. And you see that the bodies are quite similar till a maximum frequency, the same in the gain in the phase. And then this red one is an expansion of this last part to infinity. So the red here is an expansion of the yellow one to infinity. What matters is that for the operating frequency is that one one-fifth of the Nyquist frequency, this is where our maximum frequency should be, it is the same of operating in Fj omega, Fz or Fw. So the point is that now we can use the asymptotic both pl plots for developing our controller, for instance, co compensators, lead compensators or lag compensators, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we can develop our controllers the same way we did for continuous time systems. So we can make use of all this knowledge that we already have. So the next steps are to develop the control in continuous, so the CW, then transfer the controller back to the Z domain from CW to CZ, and then implement and test the controller. And this is what we will do next week. So Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and I'm waiting for your feedback on this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.